In the previous lecture, we explored how to construct a supply curve in the short run. And before that, we saw the ways in which firms are limited in the short run. They can't change their level of capital, and they can't decide to enter or exit a market. Now we move to the long run. And in the long run, firms have many more options. First, in the long run, firms can vary their fixed factor capital. In the long run, all costs are variable costs. With all costs variable, firms will never produce with negative profits. Remember from last lecture that in the short run, a firm might continue to operate even if it's losing money, since it has fixed costs that are sunk. But in the long run, with no fixed costs, we simply have to ask whether or not profits are greater than zero. What are profits? Revenue minus costs. Revenue is the price of the good times the quantity sold. Cost is simply the total cost to produce that quantity of the good. If revenue is greater than cost, profits are positive, so the firm stays in business. Now we can divide both sides by the quantity, and this shows us that if the price is greater than the average cost, the firm stays in business. Otherwise, it's time to close up shop. Second, in the long run, firms can enter or exit the market, and this is going to impact how we move from individual firm supply to market supply. In the short run, we just took all the firms currently in the market and added up their individual supplies to get to market supply. That is, we took the number of firms in the market to be fixed in the short run. But in the long run, the number of firms isn't fixed. New firms can enter the market and existing ones can leave. To understand long run supply, we'll need to understand these entry and exit decisions. When will a firm exit the market in the long run? When will it enter the market in the long run? The answer to these questions all comes down to whether the firm can make a positive profit. If it's currently in the market, but it can't make a positive profit, the firm exits. If it's not currently in the market, but it can make a positive profit, the firm enters. Simple as that. But the implication of this simple decision rule for firms is quite striking. It means that in the long run, there will be entry and exit into a perfectly competitive market until all firms make zero profit. This is quite a bold prediction. Let's think through how this would work with an example. In the mid-1980s, personal computers were relatively new, and there weren't many companies producing them. Before that, many of us old-timers were still using what was called mainframes, massive computers that could fill an entire room. Individual users used terminals used to access this centralized system. Small, user-friendly, personalized computers were a tremendous innovation, and demand for them was high. So the few companies making them, including Apple and IBM, made a lot of money. And this profit opportunity led new firms to enter the market. Hewlett Packard started making personal computers, and Dell and Toshiba, and on and on. And what happens as each new firm enters the market? The price of computers gets driven lower, and there are less profits to be made. So if firms see a chance for profits, they enter the market, and this drives those profits down. So long as there's a chance for making profits, more firms will enter making profits lower still. When does this cycle stop? It stops when there are no more profits to be made. If there are ever any profits left to scoop up, firms will enter until all the profits are at zero. But what about those mainframes that I was stuck using back in the 1980s? Well, by the early 90s, mainframes and their terminals were being gradually replaced by personal computers. And demand for the mainframes themselves dropped dramatically. Firms in the mainframe market began to lose money. So most of these firms making mainframes decide to get out of the market and focus on something more profitable. IBM was the notable exception, and it stuck around and kept producing mainframes. And what happens as each existing firm exits the market? The price of mainframes can go up, and the loss of the remaining firms, such as IBM, gets smaller. Firms see they are losing money and exit the market, and market losses fall. But if the firms remaining are still experiencing losses, more firms will exit, making losses even lower for the firms that are left. Where does the cycle stop? It stops when the remaining firms are no longer experiencing losses. If there are ever any losses, more firms will exit until profits are zero. And when these profits get to zero, whether through firms entering or exiting the market, we know that all the remaining firms will be producing their goods at the minimum average cost. How do we know this? Well, we know from earlier in this video that when profits are zero, Revenue equals cost, and price equals average cost. And we know from our work with constrained maximization that when profits are being maximized, price equals marginal cost. 
So that means that marginal cost equals average cost. And when does marginal cost equal average cost? At the minimum average cost. In fact, in the long run, the supply curve in a competitive market will be horizontal. In this case, the long run supply is perfectly elastic. All firms produce exactly where price equals the minimum average cost. If price is ever higher than that, firms would enter and drive the price back down. If price is ever lower than that, firms would exit and drive the price back up. So whether there are positive profits in a market and more firms enter, or there are losses in a market and existing firms exit, in the long run, firms are producing at the minimum average cost and all firms make zero profit. Now wait a second, this doesn't sound right. I know that there are companies out there making lots of profit. Heck, in the fourth quarter of 2015, Apple alone reported $18.4 billion in profit, the largest ever recorded by a single public corporation. Why haven't firms entered this market, grabbing their share of those billions and driving profit to zero? Well, in practice, there are two reasons that entry and exit might not work to drive profits to zero, and firms can make a positive profit. The first is that not all firms are identical. Some may have lower costs than others. The second is that in many industries, there are barriers to new firms entering. It's not as easy as just seeing Apple's billions and simply deciding to start make MacBooks and iPhones. We'll talk about these considerations in the application video.